Hey, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me in front of this wonderful community again. My name is Steve Corey, and I'm a lead consultant inquisitive. Uh, I'm going to be talking to you today about using uh, or creating Power Automate approval reminders. Uh, it's one of the situations that has come up a lot in my work. On the screen, you can see my social channels where I post content about SharePoint pretty regularly, so feel free to reach out. So approvals are great. They allow you to collect valuable feedback from users and make decisions based on them. While you're supporting business processes with Power Automate, approvals are bound to occur. Luckily, they're really easy to set up and vastly superior to the SharePoint designer workflows, which were pretty much painful. So um, there's a lot of great features in the Power Automate approvals, however. Uh, one of those are custom responses. So you're not necessarily limited to approve and reject for responses. You can have custom ones instead. There's also markdown support. So as you're adding the details of that approval item, what needs to go to the user, you can add some formatting in there to make it look nice. There's also multiple methods to approve, like web, email, out, um, Teams, and even mobile support, which is great. Uh, I especially like the Teams one because we already get too many emails anyway. So if we could send you know, things through Teams instead, it really cuts down on the organization that someone's got to do. And lastly, there's the reassignment ability. So if somebody is, you know, gets an approval and they're on vacation, maybe they could go in there and reassign that to somebody who's still in the office so that they can keep that business process moving forward. But it's not all unicorns and rainbows. There are some limitations with approvals that we're, we're dealing with. One of those is a 28 day limit. That's the longest you can wait for an approval before that action just times out. There's also no built-in reminder support. Not really sure why, because most other workflow products all seem to have that feature. So what's the solution? We, well, we could wait for Microsoft to add that to the approvals uh, connector. But what we may end up with is something that's you know more limited than what we need. We, we'd be stuck with however Microsoft designed that action to, to behave. So... What I would suggest is we just simply get creative. Uh, it reminds me of when I was little and, you know, playing with building blocks or maybe you had Tinker Toys or Lincoln Logs. I'm, I'm guessing you had something, some sort of, you know, object, and it was really simple to understand like a block, but you could build complex things out of it. Really, whatever your imagination could conjure up, you can build using those simple objects. And that's really how I see Power Automate. They give you a lot of small components and then it's up to you to use your creativity and build something complex, hopefully to solve business processes. So with that, let me show you this demo and I'll show you how I've been able to create a reminder type feature using what we already have in Power Automate. So I'm in here with a test flow. Um, the, the trigger that I'm using is when a file is created or modified. It's a pretty basic uh, trigger. I'm not really using anything advanced on it. It's just going to be looking at my sales documents library. And other than just the basic information, one thing to note is that I'm using a trigger condition. So it's not going to fire on every file creation or a file modification. In this case, I'm looking at a custom metadata field called status. And I'm only going to fire this workflow when it's equal to submitted. So in this case, someone would update their file metadata status to be submitted to start this process. Now, once this trigger uh, it fires off, we're going to create a few different variables. One of these is going to count the number of reminders that we've sent on this particular item, at least for this instance of the workflow. Then we're going to have an escape flag, because if you see down here, there's a do until loop. So this escape flag is going to help us to break out of that loop when we need to. Then we're going to create two other variables. One's going to store the approval ID, and this is the ID of the approval record inside Dataverse, because we're going to need to track that. We're also going to be storing the adaptive card JSON that's generated for this approval, because we're going to reuse this. The next thing we do is go into a condition. And this is about determining, are we reusing an approval or not? 
Now, I'll get into this on the second iteration of this flow, or the second execution, really. Um, but just know that for the first execution, we're not going to be reusing anything. <clears throat> so we're going to go down the no branch. And the no branch is going to first create a brand new approval. In this case, it's going to Adele. We're doing a little bit of markdown here just to do something with formatting. And then that's really about it. This is probably uh, the same type of approval you're used to using. However, note, I'm not using the create and wait for an approval action. I'm just creating the approval itself. We're going to do the waiting on a different part of this workflow. So once the approval is created, I'm going to get the two pieces of information I need from that action. The output of that create and approval step is going to give me the approval ID, which I'm going to store in a variable. And then the adaptive card JSON, same thing, store it right into a variable. Then we get into uh, kind of you know, the more meat of what this thing really does. I'm going to set, set the status of that document to pending approval. That way, as I modify this further down, it's not going to re-trigger the workflow, at least until I want it to. I'm also going to store the adaptive card JSON and the approval ID as part of the metadata in that, that file because we'll be reusing this. Then we really get into where, where all the work is done. So this is the do until loop that's just gonna keep looping through until the approval complete variable is set to true. And the first thing we do is we wait for the approval. So here's where we're waiting for that user to respond. And we're, we're referencing that variable. But what's interesting here is I'm expecting it to time out at some point, and I'm using that timeout to be able to send the reminder. And the way I'm doing that is under settings, I've got a timeout. Right now it's six days. For testing, you could even do one minute, and that's how I usually will test this, is to set it to one minute so I could see it working a lot faster. And that helps me iterate over this to improve it. So, well, let's cover the reminders second. First, let's just assume a perfect world scenario. The user has, has responded to that in the next six days, which is usually a miracle. Um, so at that point, we know we're going to be done with this approval. So we'll, we'll set our escape flag to true. And then we'll just handle the outcome of that approval the way you would normally do that. We send a notification to the user, and then we'll update our file metadata to set that status to either approved or rejected, and then we'll clear out the data from those fields since we don't need to store that data anymore. So like I said, that's the perfect world scenario. Uh, usually it doesn't happen that way. So in that case, after six days, this is gonna time out and it's gonna go into our reminder logic. And here, we're gonna be counting up the number of reminders we want. In this case, I've got it set to three reminders. So the first thing it's gonna do it's just going to go down this right side, this no, this no branch. So we're going to post a chat to that user through Teams, and we're going to send them the approval card, that adaptive card, JSON. And this isn't just posting a regular Teams message. This is actually going to be posting an adaptive card uh, to that user. So this is a different action than just posting a regular message. Once we get that, that message sent, <clears throat> We're going to increase or increment our reminder count by one so that we can keep track of that. And that really ends the, the, the do until loop. So we're, that make, makes us come right back up to the top. Approval complete is still a false uh, because we haven't gotten any sort of response yet. So then we start waiting for the approval again. Now, here's where the, the kind of the fun stuff really starts. Once we've sent three reminders, then when we hit this condition again, we're going to go into this yes branch. And here, we're going to set the approval complete to true. So this is going to break us out of the loop entirely. Because at this point, we're getting real close to that 28-day timeout limit. And we really want to just start this thing fresh, basically. So we're going to set this approval complete to true. We're going to update the file properties. And we're going to set it back to submitted. And this, if you paid attention to the, the trigger, well, we're triggering off of that submitted value. So this is going to end up restarting that whole workflow. We Nothing else really has changed because we've already saved our data to the file. 
So once we've updated the status, it'll hit this compose block, which really is just there to tie those two, um, those two branches together. So this workflow is going to end, but it's going to restart, like I said, because we've just re-triggered it by setting the status to submit it. It runs through all the same stuff, but then it comes back to the reusing an approval condition. And here, we're looking for the value to be inside that approval ID object, or that, that field. In this case, we're going to have approval ID. There's going to be a value there. So it's not going to go down the no branch. We don't need to create an approval. We still have one in Dataverse. And if we were to create a new approval, then what that would do is create an additional approval record and or basically orphaning the old record that would have to get cleaned up by an administrator somewhere. So we're going to go down this yes branch. And what we're going to be doing is just grabbing those values off of the file metadata fields and populating our variables. And if you remember, I was using those variables all throughout this lower section. We still set pending approval so that, again, we don't re-trigger until we're ready. And then we start coming back to the wait for an approval. And this is referencing that approval ID variable. So we're waiting for the same approval that already existed because we created it on our last flow run. All of the rest of this is all reusing what we had. It's the same approval card, the same adaptive card JSON from our last approval. And this will just continue over and over again until, in this case, Adele finally responds to that approval. So this is what I thought was a really clever way of, of handling reminders without creating orphaned approval records or anything like that. I've worked with some colleagues to improve this as recently as I think last week. So I wanted to show this off and show you what I was able to do by using those simple building blocks to build out a complex process for, to address something that we don't yet have um, as part of Power Automate. Now, to switch back to here, there's there's still some improvements. There's still some things that I can do that I want to do to improve this one step further. And dynamic approvals are at the top of my list. Now, what I mean by dynamic approvals is what if instead of you know baking in the uh, the the approver for these documents or having it as a metadata field on the file, what if there was a separate list? where we could store some rules, basically, to route approvals where they need to go. That's kind of what I see as dynamic approvals. So maybe based on a metadata field like category or department, we can look up a list and determine, well, based on these rules, who should this approval go to? That's really the next step where I'm going to take this solution to. And I'm really excited about showing this off again once I get to the next major version, if you will, of this whole solution. Um, I, I don't have a I don't have this submitted to the PNP GitHub repo yet, but that is on my list to do very, very soon. So look for that. But that really wraps up my demo. So I'm going to pass it back to you, David.